Hey Rocket Magnet, uh, thanks for your reply and interesting remarks. Uh, was an interesting video. I'm going to go through it uh, point by point. And the first main point is that you were wondering why I spent 30 minutes talking about time and space and only about 44 seconds at the end explaining why it meant the Big Bang is wrong. Well, for the video, I wanted for the viewers to get a good, you know, a good conceptual grasp of how the properties of space-time, energy and matter, you know, relate to one another. Like a good grasp of the fundamentals of physics, you know, to clearly show that a true singularity, as the Big Bang, uh, it's incompatible with relativity and physics in general that there is no reason that you know that such universe could form if one considers that dimensions are relative and related dependent on that note even big bangers admit they have no clue of the pre big bang conditions so i want to address the point that the big bang is a floating abstraction you know with no physical causes in the real world the Big Bang just has cherry-picked arbitrary evidence which violates the scientific method. You know, they come with the theories first and then handpick evidence that could fit under the wrong context. That is not science. Creationism uses the same method. On the other hand, the scientific method is about getting the facts first and then and just then formulate the theory. Okay, now to the point of whether I have heard of quantum mechanics or, or not. Well, it might seem that way, but one of my main concerns on the video was to put everything in cause and effect and in relativistic terms, in terms that can be derived from fundamental concepts or theories. For example, you cannot derive Schrodinger's equations from a fundamental theory or concepts. Schrodinger literally just went in and worked with certain forms of equations until he found one that fitted. But do you know why it fits and how the world is put together so that the equations work? You know, that is a huge gap in knowledge that is ignored by most physicists, by most physicists today. Relativity, though, can be traced from the ground up, and this is the reason why relativity doesn't compute or match with quantum mechanics. I would consider calling infinity the point at which space-time and energy matter reach the quantum state and are dominated by the so-called quantum effects, but I prefer to stay precise and not rely on probabilities, which is what quantum mechanics is, statistics. You know that at those levels ignore the inherent causes and effects so prone to huge errors. For instance, Planck's length and time must be errors because they are derived from the assumption that the speed of light is the speed limit for everything in the universe. Take photon entanglement, for example. It is a faster than light speed phenomenon that can be forecasted by quantum mechanics. Yet, there is a huge gap on how it takes place you know, the causes and effects are totally ignored. And some so-called physicists go as far as to say there are no causes. It's ridiculous. You know, yet scientifically, in the real meaning of the word, it can be precisely described in relativity. If we consider that there are faster than light speeds and that photons, for example, that, that are at the speed of light, are at a different interaction context than matter, since matter interactions move within the speed of light. So photon entanglement, or, or say any other quantum effect, you know, for example, the Compton effect can be purely explained from the relativistic relationships of space-time and, energ and energy matter, you know, without any quantum mechanical relationships or any other form of you know, wave mechanics. And now on your other main point, that if I'm saying that all particles must be made of smaller, 
you know, particles. Well, yes, if particles or substance are infinitely dividable, space-time must follow, because they must have some length and motion at all levels for them to exist. If a particle does not exist in space-time, surely it doesn't exist. And space and time without substance doesn't exist as well. It's just a pure void. And yes, a true void a vacuum shouldn't exist in nature. However, what I'm saying is that, you know, I'm trying to say is that not having a vacuum is not something magical or beyond comprehension. It is quite simple. It is just that nothingness cannot hold a pressurized system. And that when you release a pressurized system such as, such as the universe against a void, it will dissipate instantly. And certainly the speed of such dissipation would be far more greater than the motion inside the, pres the pressurized system, you know, such as speed of light. Anyways, uh, I wanted to show, uh, you know, basically why uh, the Big Bang is fundamentally flawed. In my videos, though, I didn't get into the uh, post hoc so-called evidence for the Big Bang. I have some links in the description box uh, to some interesting videos discussing that. Uh, check those out and uh, I'd also like to hear your opinions on this.